Hello and welcome to the Data Cake video for the Things Virtual Conference. I'm happy to be here and I'm happy to show you um, what the Data Cake Cloud is and how you create um, devices for your Things Network devices. So, first of all, um, let me show you how the Data Cake platform looks. It's pretty simple. Um, you log in using email and your password. And I've created this um, Things Network virtual um, conference demo workspace. There is multi-tenancy um, um, functionality, so you can create multiple workspaces. This is the demo workspace. And I have um, three devices here. One is um, actually here on my desk. It's a simple Networks um, ambient light, lightning um, detector. And we will start right away with this one here. Um, to show you how this works, I've got my Things Network console here. And this is the device that is here lying on my desk. So, um, this device is forwarding data and there's a decoder. And it's returning data um, to fields, battery and the current ambient lightning value. And we've got an integration here, which is um, a simple webhook integration. And this is forwarding data from the device every time there's new data to the data cake platform. There's an adapter here. And we create a device on the data cake platform. This is um, pretty simple. And we've got this add device button here. And you can um, select different device types. The first three here are for or the first two, these two here for, for data cake hardware. And this is the pin code device where you can create a pin code for your customers, send this device or the pin code to your customer and he can just view the data or the device. So we create an API device and in the um, case for the networks, networks sensor, I've already done this. This is the um, networks sensor and first step that you would do is go into configuration and create fields for the payload of your devices. Um, we support different type of fields, um, like integer boolean string counter, which counts absolute and relative values. I'm going to show you an example um, of this um, in a few minutes. And like in this case, um, for the network sensor, I've, I've already created fields for battery and brightness. There's also the option to add mapping fields to um, different fields. So for example, if you want to map volts to percentage, you could do this by saying like two volts from three volts, which is 100, and this is zero, um, the percentage. Um, so like battery percentage, percentage, keep it simple, save it, and you've got these Better battery um, percentage fields. What you can see is here that we just have currently um, it's set to zero because there's new new value coming. Um, but we do this later on. So to um, enable data coming from Things Network or from Things uh, Industries to the um, Data Cake portal, you can use our Things Network integration here. And all we do or need to do is go into our devices here in the console. And um, there it is. If we copy this device ID and paste it here, um, there's already a connection being made. So next will be that you use the um, field mappings. So these are the fields from your payload, battery and looks, and they are forwarded using um, the integration. And we map those fields to, um, or map those payload fields to the database field from the data uh, device here. And when there is now new data coming in, um, I simply have to press this button here somehow. We can see that it has just mapped it to um, yeah, the percentage. But we should, like in this case, apply boundaries so that it doesn't go beyond 100%. Um, when you've done that, created a mapping and so on, you can create dashboards and dashboards are pretty easy to create by simply dragging and dropping different components onto your dashboard area. Um, like in this case, we can create a widget for the percentage and you simply set float digits if you want them 
a gauge if you want a gauge 0 to 50 and 50 to 100. Um, this is bad, this is good. You simply save it and you exit the edit mode and um, then you've created the dashboard. And um, you can create different types of, of um, or you have different types of widgets available like um, headlines, text, counter, which is for those counter fields. Um, charts, uh, we've, we've also got a histogram for um, yeah, anything you would want or you need a histogram for, tables, map, and output components. Um, when we go back to the debug tab, you can see that the data is coming um, from the um, Things Network integration. We also um, display the whole information which is in the webhook, like gateway information, um, information about the um, signal quality and so on. And we store the latest uh, 100 debug messages. So this is just for debug purpose. What you also could do is create rules. Rules allow you to simply, um, we call that my first rule, um, simply select a field from your database and the condition. If something is larger than, than typical value, it's not rules, let's say brightness here, you can create actions like sending SMS, execute functions, or send emails. Um, this allows you to pretty easily create a notification if something is wrong with your sensors or your data and something like that. We also get a history function that allows you to really see um, how the um, values developed over time. And um, you can also export that to um, Excel JSON, but we also have REST API. And what we also do is that if there is incoming data from the Things Network, um, we have an MQTT integration. That means that all the values coming from your devices will be published by the um, Data Cake um, broker, MQTT broker, and you can also record messages through MQTT. So this makes it possible to have an extended integration using the MQTT broker from Things Network to bring things to Data Cake portal. Okay, let's go back to devices. I've got some different devices here. Um, also present on this virtual conference is the device from um, um, Alpha Omega or IoT Shop DE. And they produce a device called Klux. And Klux is um, an infrared head for your um, power meters and it reads out the information um, yeah, that are stored in your power meters. So in this case, um, this is also using the Things Network integration. And we've created fields um, for all the parameters coming from that device, like watt hours, kilowatt hours, and different um, pricing models for the costs. And we also used counters here. Um, this, in this example, I want to, wanted to show you how these um, counters function or, or work. Um, we've got counter store in absolute value and a relative value, and we can see the development um, of the consumption over a time. And you can set individual time frames like this is the weekly consumption, this is the daily consumption, and in the history, for example, you could go um, and select some time ranges and see the consumption um, which the device delivers and the development over the time or that custom time period. Um, last but not least, there is a device from a company called Decent Labs, which is um, a device that is um, currently offline. But um, here it's the same um, workflow. You simply create those fields in the database. Then you go into that Things Network configuration and you map the payload fields and the device ID to the payload fields from DataKit. And um, you simply, this is the debug information, and you simply um, yeah, can create dashboards and alerts and rules and so on simply by clicking without any need of programming. And this is mainly the, um, the benefit of the DataKit portal. Um, last but not least, also um, what we have are teams and members. And with teams, you could invite um, persons by simply entering an email 
and selecting some permissions and device permissions so that if you want to invite um, colleagues or even customers, you could do this. Um, you can also create teams. If you have, for example, a large amount of devices, you can create teams. This helps you that if there's a new employee or collaborator and you simply want to allow this collaborator to have access to all of your devices, you could create a team for that. But you can also, uh, in members, create API users to have tokens to allow um, readouts using our um, API. Um, yeah, this makes it pretty simple and straightforward to create a whole ecosystem or, or IoT platform for all your um, LoRaWAN devices and dashboards and invite customers, but you can also create um, workspaces. So um, like in this case, you create a new workspace and now you've got a second additional workspace where you can put your own devices, but also like in this case, we could use the um, clocks here and, or let's use the networks. Um, no, let's use the clocks. Let's go back. And um, we could copy, we can allow claiming, copy that pin code. And um, if we go to a different workspace, we can add devices here using the pin code and device and now it's in the workspace but for everyone now trying to copy this device ID and payload uh, uh, claim code um, I have to apologize there's no way to for you to claim this device because you simply have to um, enable it yes well that's the data cloud that's how it works um, if you want to try that out, you are free to invite it. We have, we support up to five devices, um, for free and, um, you can try that out. You can bring all your things, network devices on data cake and build best dashboards, invite customers or collaborators and create different things on it. And we would like to receive your feedback. And if there's any help needed, just, um, leave us a message. And, yeah, so thanks for watching. Stay tuned and enjoy the Thanks virtual conference. Thank you very much.